Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome. This is Biochemistry 2 course, code Trim 42. Today we are having lecture 29, and today we will be talking about vitamins E. This is your teacher, Dr. Naim Khan, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, CUST. Outlines for today's uh, class, we will talk about the chemistry of vitamin E. We will discuss the structure of vitamin E and the different forms available. Then we will elaborate the metabolism of vitamin E and uh, we will highlight the important sources of vitamin E that's available to humans. Then we will elaborate the recommended human requirements. Uh, how much amount of vitamin E is required to humans. And at the end, we will highlight the important functions known for vitamin E. To have a start, chemistry of vitamin E. Vitamin E is known as anti-sterility factor. Why? Because when there is a deficiency of vitamin E, it may result into a sterile, sterility in animals. An individual becomes sterile. So vitamin E is called anti-sterility factor because if vitamin E is given to that individual, sterility diminishes. So vitamin E is known as anti-sterility factor because its deficiency results sterility in humans and uh, its uh, vitamin, D vitamin E taking in the food prevents sterility. So we can say that vitamin E is anti-sterility factor. Uh, from history in 1936, it is believed that two compounds of vitamin E uh, having activity like vitamin E were isolated by, from the wheat germ oil. Wheat germ oil is actually the most common known source of vitamin E. So in 1936, two compounds were obtained from the wheat germ oil by Evans and his uh, associates for the first time. And this uh, resulted to the discovery of vitamin E. Uh, these two compounds isolated by Evans and his associates were named as alpha and beta tocopherols. Why? Because tacos means uh, from Greek is the childbirth and phyros means to bear. All mean they are having alcoholic group. So there are two compounds having alcoholic groups and they are important for the childbirth and pure child. They are making the individual to be fertile, not sterile. That's why they are known as tocopherol. So the first time, for the first time in 1936, two tocopherols, alpha and beta, were isolated and they were named as alpha, beta, tocopherols. Vitamin E is actually a collective name, is a name given to a group of closely related lipids and they are called tocopherols. This is a class of compounds related to lipids and they are known as tocopherols. Uh, the tocopherols are actually, they are the derivatives of 6-hydroxychromine, which is known as tocol. They are derivatives of tocol, so they are called tocopherols. Tocopherols are the derivatives of 6-hydroxychromine, known as tocol, and they are having an isoprenoid side chain at carbon number two. The structure of alpha tocopherol is, look this, this is the 6-hydroxychromine ring and we have side chain at carbon number two. This side chain is made up of the uh, rings, um, isoprenoid units, three isoprenoid units are linked together this side chain is making and we have this is alpha tocopherol 
this structure can be traced in the gel gen fundamental biochemistry so vitamin e is a name given to a group of compound related to leopard they are called tocopherols and actually these tocopherols are derivatives of 6 hydroxychromine which is also known as tocol and tocol is having a side chain of isoprenoid unit at carbon number 2 for the structure of alpha or tocopherol very much common is this one The different tocopherols uh, vary from one another and this uh, differences is because of the substituent group attached at carbon number 5, 7 and 8. And uh, what are these substituents? These substituents are methyl groups and hydrogen atoms. Alpha tocopherols contain three methyl groups whereas other uh, tocopherols are short of one or two methyl groups on the aromatic ring. Here, different forms can be noted. There are uh, eight forms of tocopherol, alpha, beta form, gamma form, delta, epsilon, zeta, and eta. And alpha form is that one which is having at carbon number five, methyl, carbon number seven, methyl, and carbon number eight, methyl. But in case of beta, Carbon number five is having methyl, but carbon number seven is not having methyl, that is having hydrogen. So this is the difference. In case of gamma, carbon number five is having hydrogen and seven and eight is, are having methyl groups. In case of delta forms, carbon number five and seven are not having methyl groups. Both these positions are occupied by hydrogen. Epsilon form, contain methyl group at carbon number five, but seven and eight position are occupied by hydrogen. Zeta form contain methyl group at five and seven, but carbon number eight is having hydrogen. And eta form is having methyl group at carbon number seven, but carbon number five and carbon number eight are occupied by hydrogen. As I explained in the first line, Different tocopros differ, differ from one another because of the substituent groups at carbon number 5, 7, and 8. And these substituents are actually the hydrogen or methyl groups. Alpha forms are having methyl group at all the three positions, and that's why it's highly active. But other groups, um, tocopherol may be missing one or two. Uh, at position 5, 7, and 8. This can be uh, noted here from this table. And this table is from GLGN biochemistry book. Coming to metabolism of vitamin E, uh, we know that tocopherols act as antioxidant. They are the best known antioxidant in the body. What it means? It means that they prevent the oxidation of easily oxidizable substances such as fats and vitamin A. They actually uh, stop the oxidation of fats and vitamin A. So they are the chief antioxidants known in the body. The substances such as phenols and vitamin C are required for the antioxidant property of vitamin E. Vitamin E is antioxidant, but they are requiring vitamin C and phenols because these phenols and vitamin C also sub stimulate the antioxidant activity of vitamin E. The biochemical activity of tocopherols, I mean the vitamin E, is because of its capacity to protect mitochondrial system from fat peroxidase, peroxides. Fat peroxides actually uh, when occur, when ferric peroxidation occur, then mitochondrial system is disturbed. This vitamin E is actually prevent uh, this uh, peroxidation of fat, so mitochondrial system is prevented from blocking, so its uh, activity is maintained. Tocopherol deficient muscles, especially cardiac and skeletal muscle, is showing high oxygen uptake. Whenever there is uh, oxidation, so oxygen intake will be high. There's no, no doubt about this. So there, when you, those tissues which are deficient in oxygen, such as cardiac and skeletal muscle, 
they are reported to have high oxygen uptake but if uh, tocopherol or vitamin e are uh, introduced into these tissues the oxygen consumption is reduced so this means they definitely they have a role in the antioxidant activity. Catabolism of alpha tocopherols. Breaking of alpha tocopherols results oxidation cleave the chromate ring to yield quinone or hydroquinone like compounds. If the chromate ring is broken, so it can be converted to, to the quinone uh, or quinone derivative or hydroquinone derivative, which can be converted to tocopherol. This means the tocopherol, when chromate ring is broken, it gives rise to the quinone or hydroquinone derivative. And this uh, conversion is because of the breaking of the chromate ring. There is a side chain degradation also. The degradation of uh, isoprenoid side chain may also result and this gives rise to different form. This figure is uh, from GLJN Fundamental Biochemistry. Coming to the sources of vitamin E, tocopherols are widely present in the plant kingdom and especially in the plant oils such as uh, wheat germ, rice corn, cotton seeds, soybean, and uh, peanut. But actually, olive oil it is not available. The oil is substances unlike like the vitamin A and vitamin D. Oil seeds not having vitamin E. Vitamin E is present usually in the germs, uh, wheat germ, rice, corn, cotton seed, and soybean. The vitamin E content of some oils, uh, some very common oils are like this. Uh, groundnut is containing vitamin E and its concentration is 261 milligram per 100 gram of the sample. Wheat germ. Wheat <coughs> germ contain 225 milligram per 100 gram. Soybean contain 166. Uh, linseed 110 pound contain 56 and mustard contain 32. So thus we can say that the groundnut and wheat germ are the richest source of vitamin E containing more than 200 micro milligram per 100 gram of the sample. Uh, vitamin E is also present in small amounts in the meat, milk, egg, leafy plant and some fruits. But that's very small concentration. Fish liver oils, soy button and vitamin A and D are divided of vitamin E. This point is very much important. We must note that unlike the other uh, fat soluble vitamins, that is vitamin A and D, which are uh, lavishly available in, vitamin, uh, in the fish liver oils, corn liver oil, halibut liver oil, uh, they are uh, devoid of vitamin E. Vitamin E is not available in that, so we must note that if we are taking fish liver oil, we must not be sure that vitamin E is enough in the body. So vitamin E is not available in the fish liver oil. But we say tocopherols are widely present in the plant kingdom and their rich sources are the groundnut, wheat, wheat germ, soybean, and linseed. All the four are having more than 100 milligram per 100 gram of a sample. Milk, meat, and eggs are containing very small amounts, but the fish liver oils are not the rich, uh, having vitamin E, though they are the sources of vitamin A and D. This table can be traced in the GLGN biochemistry book. Coming to the requirements of uh, vitamin E. The daily requirement of vitamin E for adult uh, is calculated to be uh, 30 international units for men and 25 international units for women. Yes, in case of pregnancy and lactation, uh, pregnant women and lactating women mothers are having more uh, requirement of vitamin E and this is 30 international units. For infants and children as they are in growing stage, Vitamin E requirement is high and this is uh, from 1 to 125 international 
uh, 1 to 1.25 international unit uh, of the vitamin E per kg of their body weight. So looking to the body weight, the requirement of vitamin E increases. Now, what is the international unit for vitamin E? One international unit of vitamin E is actually equivalent to the biological activity of 1.1 milligram of power compound or 0.67 milligram of alpha tocopherol in D, D form. So if you are taking 0.67 milligram of D alpha tocopherol or power compound in case of power compound 1.1 milligram, so its activity will be equal to one international unit. And uh, one, we need 25, uh, 30 international for men and 25 international unit for women in case of pregnancy and lactation to offspring. This requirement reaches to 30 international units. For children, the, require, the requirement of vitamin, of vitamin E is from 1 to 1.25 international, international units per day. What are the important functions of vitamin E? Vitamin E function mainly is antioxidant. This is a very, very, very important function of vitamin E. And it helps the protecting cells from damage caused by the unstable molecules called free radicals. Free radicals are causing oxidation, so they are protecting cells from the, their action, the free radical. So the free radicals are then unable to damage The cells. So they are a chief antioxidant uh, and they are preventing the cells from damage due to free radicals. Vitamin E protects cells from damage thus lowering a variety of health problems from heart to cancer. This is a very broad um, range and it uh, vitamin E are helping and protecting the body uh, from the damages and uh, usually this start from heart disease up to the cancer in all these cases in one way or another way vitamin E is involved they are antioxidant and carrying out important functions in these diseases vitamin E is important for functioning the immune system cell immunity is very important as a powerful antioxidant it helps the body to fight off infection so vitamin E is important for the immune system too. It enables the immune, uh, help the immune, immune system to fight against the infections. Vitamin E helps protects uh, eyesight. And vitamin E plays an important role in the production of hormone-like substances such as prostaglandins. These are very important substances and they are produced with the help of vitamin E. Remember, prostaglandins, they are regulates a variety of the body functions such as blood pressure and muscle contraction. Blood pressure must be maintained and we know that it uh, causes serious medical illnesses. And uh, muscle contraction is important because of without muscle contraction, individual cannot move. So these two things are controlled by the prostaglandin and Vitamin E is helping in the release of prostaglandin. So vitamin e is a very important vitamin. Dear student, once again, Western Tart Book and GLJ are recommended. Uh, please highlight each point we discussed today and make a detailed notes for yourself. And uh, from today, I will say uh, goodbye. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.